Welcome, welcome. Guys, thanks so much for being here on this Sunday. It's kind of gloomy here in San Diego. So it's been rough starting this morning just because it's cloudy and like we have a chance of rain. I know that sounds weird to most of the rest of the country because <laughs> like rain is so normal, but here it's just not that normal. But anyway, let me know that you're here. Let me know that you can hear me. Go ahead and post in the chat. Um, today we're going to be talking about stress and anxiety in our animals and our pets and um, ways, some things that can cause anxiety and stress, some like physical symptoms that you can actually see. Um, Oh, I didn't mean to do that. So that you can actually see in your dogs. Um, so we'll talk about some of those. And we'll also talk about... There we go. We'll also talk about um, some things you can do to help your pet with stress and anxiety. Do I need more? Okay, right. <laughs> I need more lighting. My husband's helping me out, guys. So... Um, let's start off... Again, please make sure you are posting in the chat to let me know you're here, to um, just let me know you can hear me. That would be a good one because I know the software that we use, OBS, has been acting up for my husband a little bit lately. So um, I just want to make sure you guys can hear me. So make sure you are posting in the chat. Also, the more you interact with me, the more YouTube shows this video and other videos on my channel to other people. Um, it it's what they call their algorithm. And my whole goal is to help more pets and their parents. So the more people that can see my videos, the better. So the more interaction on the videos, then the more people can see the videos. So if you guys could make sure you are posting in the chat to let me know you're here, let me know you can see me, let me know a little bit about your dog. Thanks so much for letting me know, JR, that you are here and that you can see me. So, um, Let's talk a little bit about anxiety and stress in our dogs. So a lot of times people call dogs skittish and really these dogs are suffering with anxiety and stress. They can be just like really wary of strangers or other dogs. They can be jumpy and edgy and kind of nervous, but these are all it's really anxiety showing itself. So there are a lot of studies that have been done on dogs and anxiety and stress. And a lot of time we know that our mood, our anxiety and our stress actually affects our dog as well. So in, in, in some instances, our cats too, our dogs, really feed off of our energy. So if we're really stressed, stressed and anxious, our dogs can be as well, just because we are, but our dogs can also be stressed and anxious just for things going on in their lives. Um, and it's really easy to say, well, my dog has everything in the world. What, what would they possibly have to be stressed or anxious about? But you have to look at it from your dog's point of view. And we also want to really take into account, not just psychologically what's going on with our dogs, but physically what's going on with our dogs. Because the more stress and anxiety your dog has, the more they are affected physically. And this is also true for us. Um, so when we're anxious, when our dogs are anxious and stressed, there is um, a hormone that is released. It's called norepinephrine and it actually interferes with our gut bacteria. So we can wind up, our dogs wind up with physical symptoms of stress as well. And it can really, really irritate our whole body when our GI, when our, you know, gut is out of whack. So whether your dog has like a short-term stressor or a long-term stressor, and many dogs do have long-term stressors. Julia, hi, thank you so much for being here. And you have, okay, so Minnie is your dog, a three-year-old Huntaway Collie Cross. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Julia, and Minnie as well. Let me know in the chat if you feel like Minnie is experiencing any sort of stress or anxiety. Um, 
And as we go through today, if you start noticing any of the symptoms, um, you can point those out as well. Thank you for being here. So triggers of anxiety in our dogs, of course, I t I've already mentioned that we can be a big trigger for our dog's anxiety and stress. So if we're stressed, if we're anxious, that is definitely going to rub off on our dogs. Um, any sort of changing in like the household routine or moving or even if people are moving in and out of the house, that can be a huge stressor for our pets. And I think that's kind of um, probably a more obvious one. Um, separation from family members or pets. So if say, you know, one of your pets is ill and goes to the hospital and has to stay overnight, that could be um, a stressor for another pet that you have in the home because they're missing <laughs> their friend. Uh, or even if you go away for vacation and your dog, you, you have a pet sitter or you board your dog, which I much prefer a pet sitter, but um, that can cause a lot of stress and anxiety in our pets. Um, not, and that's not to say that we should never do these things. I mean, life happens, right? But these are, these are triggers that are known to cause stress and anxiety in our dogs. Um, exposure to strange and unfamiliar objects or animals or people or anything strange and unfamiliar that can cause stress. And I know it does with me too. I mean, whether you're introverted or extroverted or you think you're one or the other, I mean, unfamiliar places, unfamiliar people can, you know, it, it can give us anxiety. Um, if they have poor relationships with a pet or a, a person in the household, that certainly can cause stress and anxiety in your pet. Um, Punishment-based training methods of course, are gonna to cause tons of anxiety in our dogs and we never want to use them. If you've been following me for any length of time, you know I only promote positive reinforcement for training and honestly, it's the only scientifically proven way to actually effectively train our dogs. So we never wanna yell or hit um, our pets, we never want to use prong collars or shock collars. We don't wanna use fear or pain in any way whatsoever. Um, not just because it's cruel and inhumane, but also because it causes anxiety and stress in our dog's lives. Um, our cats as well, if you are doing any of that with your cats. Um, loud noises is, is a big one for dogs, and that can be fireworks. I know fireworks are um, terribly stressful for a lot of dogs, and I mean, a lot of wildlife, a lot of cats. Thunderstorms also can be. Thunderstorms are kind of, they, they actually, fireworks actually kind of mimic thunderstorms in an odd way um, by the sudden, unexpected, bright noise, br I'm sorry, bright colors in the sky, bright flashes of light and loud noises. So those can also um, cause a lot of stress and anxiety for our pets. So if any of these you are finding you know, you've, you've noticed your dog has reacted to any of these things that I'm talking about, go ahead and post in the chat and let me know. Um, so it, it also, and I talk a lot about enrichment, it's an integral part of your dog's everyday life and certainly training routine. But when we don't give our animals and you know, I, I generally specifically talk about dogs and cats, but if we don't give our animals the leeway, basically, to actually act like a dog and actually act like a cat. So, for instance, dogs need a lot of exercise. They need, you know, to run around and play. There are some dogs, I mean, that are, what they were bred to do they really want to do that thing, even if it's a like mock up of that thing, um, whether it's hunting or herding or whatever it may be. Um, not allowing them to do these things can really cause a lot of stress and anxiety in their lives. For cats, they need to scratch and claw at things. They need vertical space. They really need, um, they need a lot of playtime that um, mimics 
hunting behavior. These are things that our cats need. And when we don't allow the, the, them that leeway to actually be able to act like the animal that they are, that can cause a lot of stress and anxiety. Um, also unwanted attention. So that can be, um, you know, when you are forcibly hugging or kissing your dog. Now, some dogs don't mind it. Some dogs actually like the, um, close attention. A lot of dogs don't like it. So really pay attention to your dog to find out if it's something that they actually like or something that they really don't like. So if we're forcing something like that on them, which is actually not at all natural for dogs or cats, they would never do that. Um, like in the wild, that's not how they interact with one another. So it can be really stressful for them if we force that on them. Dogs that are left alone for several hours during the day can get lonely and bored. Um, that can cause a lot of stress and anxiety. So, you know, just by having a friend or a neighbor uh, come over maybe in the middle of the day to give your dog a quick walk um, or to play with them at, at, a, at the very minimum, it can really alleviate a lot of that stress and anxiety for your dog. Um, and of course, doggy daycare is another option if your dog is social. Um, increasing your dog's daily physical level can help a lot. Um, a lot of dogs are not getting the amount of activity that they need every day, the amount of exercise they need every day, and it, it really can help a lot in um, just getting that all the exercise that they need, that they actually require in a day can help to ease a lot of the stress and anxiety that just normal everyday life provides. So it's really important for everyone in the family to respect and understand um, that a dog is not a human, that a cat is not a human, and that we really do need to treat them um, species, like, you know, appropriately for their species and make sure that everybody is comfortable with that. So let's talk about some of the symptoms and signs of anxiety in our dogs. Um, so trembling and shaking, having their ears like pulled or pinned back, lowering or tucking in their tail, yawning, um, panting, um, like licking their nose and lips. All of these are symptoms and signs of anxiety in our dogs. And they can be like really acute in the moment. Um, and of course things can like, a, a lot of these are really acute signals. So like in the moment, if something is happening that they're uncomfortable with, these are a lot of the signals that your dog will be giving off. If your dog has increased whining or barking, or if your dog is a howler, <laughs> increased howling, that can also be a sign of anxiety and stress. Cowering or um, like kind of a crouched body posture, even hiding is another sign. Um, diarrhea, like we were talking about earlier, it, the norepinephrine that is released, which is the flight or fight hormone, um, when you are in a stressful event, same thing happens in your dog, it really messes up and um, interrupts the, the gut, what's going on in the gut. So of course that's going to lead to an upset tummy and that can lead to diarrhea. Um, it, if your dog's appetite changes, especially if their appetite is reduced or they are um, ignoring food, when, when we're training and we move from inside to outside, that's a huge step for your dog. <laughs> Regardless of how much you've been training inside your home, when you move outside, you are inviting a ton of distraction. And when you do that, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest hurdles to overcome is actually being able to get your dog to pay attention to you instead of all the distractions going on around you. And one of the ways you know that your dog is not in a learning brain mode is that they are completely ignoring any treats that you may have. So there's just too much going on. There's like stressors everywhere because your dog is trying to pay attention to everything and know like maybe this over here is exciting, but maybe this over here is um, a little stressful and like I'm not sure what that is yet and I need to pay more attention to it. So that's one of the things that we know is... Um, a signal or a symptom of stress and anxiety. And we see that, like I said, 
also in training when we move and outside and we're adding a ton of distraction. So we know that that is stressful for our pets. Um, and then of course, destructive behaviors. You know, it's really unfortunate that a lot of dogs wind up being relinquished to shelters because of destructive behaviors when in reality, their destructive behavior is really a reflection of their environment and, um, you know, what you're doing or not doing, basically, because they're just reacting to their environment. If they haven't had any training, if there's a lot of stressors going on and you're not mitigating those stressors, um, you know, destructive behavior is just bound to happen. We see it a lot in children, too. Um, you know, little kids, they don't know how to handle the stressors <laughs> that are going on around them. They're really, you know, they, they just don't know appropriate ways of communicating. And with our dogs, if we don't make an attempt make an attempt, we actually have to work at it to be able to communicate effectively with our dogs because we're not even the same species. So it's not like our dogs are just going to learn English one day, <laughs> right? Um, we're not even the same species. So we have to really work at a communication channel with our dogs. And um, when we don't do that and our dogs are trying to communicate with us and we are not even trying to figure out what they're saying to us and we're not do, trying anything to communicate with them on their wavelength in a way they're going to understand, then that frustration builds and builds and builds and destructive behaviors is, that is ultimately, um, you know, what winds up happening. So there are a lot of things that we can do to help um, calm our dogs and provide some... Um, you know, ease some of the anxiety that they are feeling. But before we get into that, I do want to just really quickly check back in with you guys, see how you're doing, see what's going on with you. Um, if any of this is ringing a bell with what's going on in your in your dog's life right now, or something you've noticed in the past, or even if you're just taking notes for the future, let me know by posting in the chat. Also, I do want to remind you guys, if you have made it this far, thank you so much for being here with me. Um, if you are not already subscribed to my channel here on YouTube, right down there um, below the video, there will be like a red subscribe button. If you are subscribed, it will be gray. If you're not subscribed, it will be red. So if it is red, go ahead and click it and turn it gray. And then once it turns gray, or if it is already gray for you, make sure you click the bell next to the button that now says subscribed and select all notifications. That way YouTube can actually notify you anytime I post a new video or anytime I'm going live on my channel so you can jump in and participate. Like JR and Julia have done already today. So thank you guys for being here. And Julia, I hope Minnie is doing well today. Um, three years old, so you have, you're, you've pretty much gotten over the, that terrible twos, right? <laughs> I hope things are um, calming down a little bit and you're getting, um, uh, out of that puppy stage. So let's talk about how we can help our dogs deal with anxiety and re reduce stress in their lives. Um, and there's actually a really interesting study that I'm going to talk to you about before we jump off of here. So make sure to stick in there with me. And you're going to be like, wow, but I'm going I'm to tell you that in just a couple minutes. So make sure your dog is getting plenty of exercise, playtime, um, mental stimulation, affection, uh, and of course, more and more exercise. There are far too many dogs who are not getting enough exercise, both mental and physical exercise. Um, just, you know, walks around the block once or twice a day generally is not going to be enough for most dogs. And a lot of dogs require a lot more exercise than their owners think they need. Um, labs, for instance, are kind of, you know, known to be family dogs and just kind of go with the flow and, um, you know, calmer and they really need a ton of exercise. So it's one of the most, you know, exercise is one of the most overlooked things. One of the most effective treatments for reducing stress in, I mean, really like, 
for us as well. Like we need to be paying attention to everything we're talking about with our dogs with us too. Um, so make sure your dogs are getting plenty. And this is free by the way. So you don't have to even pay anything for it. <laughs> so make sure your dog is getting plenty of mental and physical exercise every day. Um, you can also, and this is something that Dr. Becker talks about, and if you haven't heard of Dr. Becker before, she's the world's most followed veterinarian. Um, in the link, that I put a link in the description of this video to an, a blog post she wrote. Um, so one of the things she talks about is actually adding a probiotic supplement or fermented veggies to your dog's food. Preferably your dog is already eating a, a balanced nutritionally balanced species specific whole food diet um, but probiotics have actually been shown through studies to help reduce uh, stress related GI disturbances in our dogs so uh, we, we've talked about a couple of times already how stress re um, when we have stress our body's natural response is to um, release norepinephrine, norepinephrine, which is the flight or flight hormone, and that really does a number on our GI tract, on our gut. So um, adding some probiotics or fermented vegetables to what hopefully you're already feeding is a nutritionally balanced species specific whole food diet, um, that would actually help quite a bit. So make sure if you do have to leave your dog home alone that you have provided him plenty of exercise, him or her, plenty of exercise before you have to leave. And make sure you are leaving your pet with some sort of clothing or maybe a blanket that has your scent on it. That can also be very relaxing for your dog, especially if they do suffer from um, anxiety. You can also have... Um, like a treat release toy, or you can like strategically place treats and toys in different areas of the house for your dog to kind of have like a little scavenger hunt while you're gone. So um, there's lots of different things you can do. You can also leave some really soothing music. In fact, there's specifically like YouTube channels and I think even TV channels, DVDs you can buy that are made specifically for dogs. So it's like dog music or dog TV. Um, so if you have to leave your dog home alone for a period of time, hopefully a short period of time, that you can leave that on for them and it will actually kind of help reduce their stress levels. So that would be good. Um, you can also, if you know something stressful is going to be happening soon, you can um, go ahead and start playing that music before it happens. There have been a lot of studies on the different kinds of music that dogs really respond to and that it really can help um, reduce stress levels in our dogs. There's also, um, I've talked about it a few times on my channel, um, but using essential oils is really, um, can be very calming. There's a lot of different things that essential oils can do, and I do want to remind you that the only essential oils I ever recommend for our pets, um, the only essential oils that I ever recommend for use in our home and around our pets is Animalio because they are the only veterinary grade essential oils. Um, let's see here. And I will actually, so I can't, put a link in the chat, but I will just type in Animalio so you can check them out. And that's um, by Dr. Melissa Shelton. She's an integrated veterinarian. Um, so let's see here. There are actually specific blends that are made, like Calmamile is one of the blends that Animalio has that is specifically designed to help calm you and your dog, um, your cat. What I really like about Animalio is that she doesn't just test the, um, these essential oils on dogs. She tests them on all different kinds of species of animals. And she, of course, tells you how to properly use them with different species of animals. And one thing to really know about essential oils, not that I want this whole video to be about essential oils because it's not, 
is that there's a lot of misinformation on the internet about essential oils. There are a lot of people who think that you just cannot use essential oils at all around cats and that so many of them are dangerous to our dogs as well. The reality is that when you have something really popular like essential oils have become in the last decade, um, you wind up with a lot of poor quality in the market. So there are a lot of companies out there that they just put out whatever. Um, and a lot of it isn't even essential oils, but they call it essential oils. And those can have really adverse effects on both people and our pets. So it's really not about the oil so much as it, like what type of oil as it is the quality of the oil. Um, so that's something to really be, and of course, do your own research. I have done a ton of research on essential oils because I was concerned as well when I started using them. And the reality is that it is so much about the quality of the oil and the process of extraction because some processes use chemicals to actually extract the oil from plants and that's no good. Um, so we, you know, we don't want to do that, but a lot of cheaper brands, they do that because it's cheaper for them to do it. And anyway, I don't want to go too much on a tangent here, but there are some really good essential oils out there that you can feel confident um, to use on and around your pets. And Animalio is what I actually recommend for that. Um, you can also look for integrative veterinarians, homeopathic veterinarians um, that can they can help a lot with, especially with insight into natural remedies and natural ways of helping your your dog cope or your cat cope. Um, yeah, so those are just a few things. Let's see. JR says, how can you tell the difference in anger and anxiety in a dog? So aggression is like threatening or harmful behavior is what we think of as, um, you know, when we think of anger and aggression. And it's usually, so you generally have to pay a lot of attention to the body language, but generally when a dog is, is angry and aggressive, they're kind of lashing out and um, you're looking for like staring and growling and barking and snarling, <laughs> lunging. Um, so we're looking at like more like, off offense behavior, right? Whereas if your dog has anxiety and stress, they're kind of more turning in and trying to get away from the stressor. So that's a good question. I hope I answered that. Okay for you, JR. Um, let's see. Julia says, we're waiting for Minnie to grow up, but she is so much better than she was. We've just returned home from a week in our motor home. I think she has left her ears there. I think she has left her ears there. <laughs> I hope that you guys had a fun vacation in your motorhome. That sounds like so much fun. My husband and I actually talk, Julia, my husband and I talk um, quite a bit about, you know, renting an RV and taking Kim out for a little trip. Um, we're currently in the process of building a house and moving, so it's, we're going to have to kind of put that off a little bit, but that sounds like a lot of fun. And, um, oh, she left her ears there. Okay, so you mean she's not listening <laughs> after vacation? I gotcha. That took me a minute. Um, yeah, you gotta have to get back in the routine of things and, you know, just slowly work on, um, cues that you know that she knows and build up from there. Um, make sure you're using high value rewards and you'll get back in the routine in no time, I'm sure. Um, so we've been on for about, about half an hour now, and I don't want to take up too much more time, but I do want to tell you about that study, um, that I was kind of hinting about a few minutes ago. So I actually heard about this from Rodney Habib and, um, I think Karen Becker as well. There have been studies done, and I was talking at the beginning, yeah, Julia not listening, <laughs> it took me a minute to realize. Um, so I was talking about at the beginning 
that our dogs can have a, a, their own stress and anxiety responses based off of us having stress and anxiety. And what was interesting is that dogs play off of our stress and anxiety by uh, sight. So they take into account our changes in our body language, um, which does change when we're stressed or anxious versus when we're calm and happy. Um, so our body language is going to change and our dogs take that in. They also take in stress and anxiety signals from us by um, hearing. So changes in our tone of voice, or maybe if we're angry and yelling, that is all going to play a role in um, our dog's stress and anxiety as well. But what is really, really interesting is that, and some of us may hear this and be like, oh yeah, that makes so much sense. Our dogs also take in our stress and anxiety by smell. Because I was talking about the norepinephrine hormone that our body releases when we have stress and anxiety. Our dogs have the exact same hormone that is released when they have stress and anxiety. And they can smell that on us. And um, they can smell the changes on our body when we are stressed and when we are anxious. And so one thing that has been suggested is that if you've had a long day at work, if you've been stressed, if you've been anxious, if you've got things going on, take a shower right when you get home and wash off all of those scents of stress and anxiety and all the hormones that your body has released, which of course, I'm, you know, they're still going on in your body, but just wash all of that off of your body in the shower. And it actually does help reduce the stress in our dogs when we wash all of those scents off of our body. That is so cool and quite amazing. And honestly, what dogs are able to do never ceases to amaze me. But um, that was what I really wanted to talk to you guys about at the end here. I think it is just so amazing how our dogs pick up on everything going on with us, going on in our lives. And of course, stress and anxiety would be included in that. So there are lots of things we can do. Of course, I talked about the exercise, the mental and physical exercise. If we're stressed, if we're anxious, call, you know, just do everything we can. Um, provide a little bit of self-care to ourselves. Try to calm down. Take a shower. I mean, just the act of taking a shower is kind of calming in itself. But we're also getting all of that, all of the smells off of us that help trigger that stress, um, th that stress trigger in our dogs. So... That's really cool. Uh, JR says, and when you take a shower, you feel less stressed. Yes, absolutely, you do. So it helps in a couple of different ways. So take all of the that in. If you have any questions, make sure to post in the chat and let me know. I do have a couple of um, asks here for you before we end this video. I'm not gonna take up too much of your time. Make sure to check the links in the description of this video. Um, first and foremost, to my Patreon. I, I really hope you guys join me over on Patreon. It is a way to help me bring you more content, newer content, stay on top of things, and just get you know, get more for you. Also, when you join Patreon, you get new and exclusive content over there that you don't get anywhere else. So I do hope that you join me over on Patreon. Also, if you join today, you get an extra bonus. It is normally a $29 value. I am going to be giving it to you for free. It is a PDF that has over 30 canine enrichment ideas. Um, activities that you and your dog can do. Some of them you can just set up for your dog to do on their own. Um, it includes some instructions and some videos and, uh, you know, links to videos. It's an amazing deal at $29, but if you go ahead and join me over on Patreon, you get it for absolutely free. You don't have to pay for it at all. So I will give that to you if you go ahead and join me over on Patreon. Also, please share, um, my channel with friends and family who have pets, dogs and cats specifically, but any pets will do. 
my goal is to help as many pets and their pet parents as I possibly can. And this year in 2021, I really want to get this channel to 25,000 subscribers. And I cannot do that without your help. So make sure to share this channel with anyone who has pets um, that you come across. I would very much appreciate it. Um, and yeah, so we're going to go ahead and end today's video. You can still post in the chat if you're here with me live. If you have any questions after the fact, you can post in the comments and let me know. I check my comments very regularly and I respond to as many of them as I possibly can. Of course, if you go and join me over on Patreon, you can also join in the chat through Discord over on Patreon so we can actually have conversations over there as well. Um, actually, a little bit easier <laughs> over there on Patreon. So um, I do hope you join me over there. I hope if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Give this video a big thumbs up. That helps the YouTube algorithm a lot. And um, make sure to share this channel with other pet parents. I really would love to get to 25,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And like I said, I cannot do it without you. So those are my asks. And I hope they're not too much. I know they're not too much. Um, for me to continue to bring you content like this. So thank you again so much for being here with me this Sunday. Um, as usual, I have published videos that go up on Wednesday, Wednesdays, so make sure if you're not already subscribed that you go ahead and subscribe and turn on all notifications so you get notified when Wednesday's video goes up and then I will be seeing you live again next Sunday. So thanks so much for being here. Thanks for posting in the chat. And again, if you watch this video later on, post in the comments to let me know you're here as well. I will um, see you guys on the next video coming up this Wednesday. Bye.